One of the other big storylines coming out of game one, though, and it was the last game of the game ones this weekend. Utah loses at home to Memphis. Memphis is getting a little, on a little hot streak right now to not only get in, but then still game one. But then the news broke after that Donovan Mitchell thought he was going to play, said he had no pain, practiced three times this week. But then for whatever reason, Utah's coaching and medical staff held him out of the game yesterday, heard it with some tense moments behind the scenes. What do we really make of that situation in Utah right now? Um, I mean, again, I thought he was going to play as, as well, which kind of sucks because it was sort of a game time decision that he didn't play. So I know that kind of threw off off, off, off for, for all the guys that like to put a little something down on the, on the games. I know that kind of threw that off. Um, but I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. I, I think I still feel like Utah can beat Memphis uh in 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 the series without uh donovan mitchell um but like you said they're hot right now um and they surprised me yesterday they surprised me they surprised me yesterday um they surprised me in the in the playing tournament uh you know beating 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 up on on, on golden state even though i i thought that memphis was gonna win but i just couldn't bring myself to bet against Steph in that situation. Um, but Utah is definitely going to need Donovan Mitchell if they make it out of the out of the first round. I don't know what's going on. For their sake, I hope he's back. Um, because even though I think they can beat Memphis without Donovan Mitchell, it's going to be hard. And you don't want to get into a situation where you fall behind in the series because now what happens if they say, Oh no, Donovan Mitchell can't play game two and you lose game two. And now you got to go to Memphis down 0 and 2. That's going to be a tough hole to climb out of. Yeah, Utah isn't explosive offensively. They're a team that's kind of built to beat you, you know, by a thousand cuts. And we'll just keep cutting and chopping you down as the game goes on, you know, and, and their depth is really what does it because when Donovan does come off the court, you got Jordan Clarkson, you got Joe Ingles, who are both up for six man of the year. Uh, Rudy isn't a big offensive force, but he definitely controls everything defensively. And then you got a veteran like Mike Conley. So I agree with you. I don't think they can afford to go down 0-2 and put themselves in a situation where they have to win four of those next five games against a Memphis team that's playing with a lot of confidence. John Morant has already said, this is what we want. We want this pressure. We want this moment. He's showing it. Dylan Brooks, shout out to him. Shout out to a lot of the young guys making their first playoff appearances that are really showing up because not only those two guys, Trey Young, he yes. had an amazing debut performance at the Garden against my Knicks yesterday. We're going to get into that series as well. But we're seeing a lot of young guys adjust and, and take on the pressure and respond to that pressure. And so if you're Utah, you don't want to be going to Memphis down 0-2 in front of a raucous crowd, because they're going to have crowd, uh, a crowd there as well. I don't, I'm not sure what the capacity will be, but they will have fans in the seats. You don't want to go there against a team that has a lot of confidence, feeling like, all right, now we're up 2-0, and we could possibly finish this off at home. Um, I do want to ask you, though, Trip. we saw a couple upsets on the road. I don't really categorize the Hawks over the Knicks as an upset. That's a considered, it's a 4-5 matchup, and by most people, it's considered to be a 6-7 or seven game series, so we expect it to be close. But Dallas went into L.A. and beat the Clippers. And then obviously Memphis went into Utah one. What team that's down 0-1 are you most concerned about right now? Um, I mean, I, I it would have to be Utah, just because I, I'm not sure what's going on with Donovan Mitchell right now. Um, I would love to say it's the Clippers, but I think with the Clippers, I think you know. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing as far as trying to guard Luca. Um, you know, and I say that because you have two of two top ten two way players with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, who are both elite defenders. I don't understand why you are trying to force uh, the, the 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 job of guarding Luca onto Patrick Beverly, who is six one, and Luca is about six seven, maybe even even six eight. I was confused by that um, throughout game one. I would hope, because I do respect Ty Lue as a coach, I would hope that either Paul George or, or Kawhi or, or a combination of those two guys is going to be guarding uh, Luka throughout game two. And I think they win game two if that, if that actually happens. Um, but 
I think it, it, it has to be Utah just because, again, if you know, if if, if you go down 0-2 in the series because Donovan Mitchell isn't there, and it's not like this, this Utah team has that much playoff experience. You know what I mean? Where they've been going on these deep runs for the past five years and they've been there before. This is actually, you know, playoff wise, this is actually a relatively young team as well. So we're talking about, you know, young guys versus versus young guys. Um, I know you got Mike Conley out there who does have a, a lot of playoff experience, but Donovan Mitchell was, hasn't been going to the playoffs the past, past five years, Go Bear, none of those guys. So they're actually in a very tricky situation where if Donovan Mitchell doesn't play and these guys can steal game two and go back home up 2-0, it's going to be hard for, for Utah to creep out of that hole. Yeah, so Utah has, has more playoff experience than Memphis, but to your point, I don't think you. I think Utah's only been to the second round one time with this core group of guys. They've gotten bumped in the, in the first round a couple of times uh, by Harden and Houston. Then obviously it happened last year as well with Denver. So they don't have much experience of winning series. They have some, you know, playoff experience in the sense of hey, we've had to play a couple of series, but do you know how to win a series? You haven't shown that you can come back in a series. You haven't shown that you can close out a series because obviously last year you were three one and can't close that one out. So. That's where the doubt starts to creep in. If you go down 0-2 or even go down 3-1, where it's like, how are we supposed to get back? Because we've never had to do it before. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real, Real Talk. Fans.